Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to go over parents and object inheritance. And it is one of the most powerful uh, uh, things available to you inside of Game Maker. And it's one, honestly, you if you want to build any sort of a game that's uh, reasonably skilled, um, a very big game, you're going to have to understand how parenting works or else it's just going to take you for forever. So we're going to go over that. And I also just wanted to say thanks to everyone who's been supporting me on my Kickstarter campaign. I've gotten tons of support from you guys, even support from um, Yo-Yo Games, the company, and Sandy Duncan, the CEO, which was very flattering. So it's really exciting for me. If you want to check that out, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link right here. I'm writing a book on Game Maker Language, and I just really want to teach uh, you guys what I know. And so I'm putting everything down in a book that you can have all in one spot and reference whenever you need it for that convenience. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that you can see is that I've got three sprites. I've got a player, a solid, and a wall, and there's nothing special about them. The player sprite is centered the the solid and the wall are just zero zero origin and the wall kind of looks like a brick wall um, but it's nothing really that special so I'm gonna create three objects now we're gonna create one called object player and assign that sprite to it and create another one called object wall and assign the wall sprite to it Create another one called object solid and assign the solid to it. Now I'm just going to do a basic movement system because um, I want to focus mainly on how parent parenting how parents work and how inheritance works and not on the actual movement code. So I'm going to add a step event to the player object and drag over a code. And this is just going to be a move the player code and we're going to do if keyboard check vk write and keyboard check sorry and not place meeting x plus 4 y object solid so we're checking so let's talk about what this code does here. Um, we're checking to see if the player is pressing the right key. And also, we're checking to see if the place to the, um, to the right of us is, is free from any solid objects, right? But this will only work for solid objects. We're going to do x plus equals 4, which will just move us to the right. Okay, I'm going to copy this code four times and then I'm going to change VK right to VK left and it's going to be X minus 4 and X minus equals 4 and then I'm going to change VK right here to VK up and change it here to VK down and we need to change these instead of instead of checking in the X direction we're going to do Y minus 4 on that one y plus 4 on this one and then we're going to make sure these are y as well and let's see plus 4 plus 4 minus 4 minus 4 now let's create a room right here and I, it's driving me nuts my room is defaulted to start really really large it's annoying so uh, let's put in some solid objects and I'm just going to stretch them out so that I don't have to put in a ton of them and create kind of a little room here um, that our player can move around in like that sweet let's put the player in and run the game. And while it compiles here, uh, 
So this isn't anything special. I haven't used parents yet at all. And um, I've just put in a basic movement example, which might be useful to some people. I mean, it's kind of like Pac-Man system here. We can move along the walls, move around in here, and we can't go through the walls. They won't let us through. So that works great. But here's the problem. Uh, inside of your game, you're going to want to have tons and tons of different types of uh, solids in the game that you don't want your player to move through. They're all going to look different. They'll have different sprites. Maybe some of them will even move. Uh, but you don't want to have to put a check in every single time. I mean, we could do and not place meeting x plus 4 y object wall, right? We could check for the wall as well and just um, with an and here. And that would work, but then for every single new solid type of object we added in, we'd have to do a new check over to C. And that's just really annoying. That would take forever. But what you can take advantage of, if we put in this wall right here, and I'm going to put it all the way across here. Well, I'm going to, this one's designed to kind of work like this. Um, when I run the game, currently, I will be able to move through that brick wall. Uh, because there's nothing in the code that checks over. And like I showed you, we could actually write that in to check to make sure. But that's just going to get ridiculous. The solution is parenting. So the solution is if we come into our wall object, we can give it a parent, which means it will inherit all code from that other object that it doesn't override itself. So if the other object has a create event, it will inherit that create event unless it has its own create event and then it won't. So, uh, but it also inherits all checks. So when this right here checks for a solid, it checks for a solid and then it also checks for all of the solid objects, children objects. So it will check for a wall as well. So all we have to do is come in here and set parent to the object solid. Now when we run our game, the player will no, will no longer be able to move through that wall. It will be just as if it's a it's the object solid as well. The player object will treat them exactly the same in regards to collision and you can see that works. I can no longer move through that wall like I could before. So that's one of the benefits of it and uh, let me show you one more thing real quick. If you were to, let's say you were to give this um, give this solid object here an alpha value. Um, what an alpha value does is it makes it partially transparent, right? So you can kind of see through it. We're going to do alpha, let's see, image. Well, let's do image blend. We're not going to do an alpha value. We're going to set a blend value. So image blend will just blend a color into it. And we're going to set this equal to C um, gray. Okay. So that will take our currently uh, kind of dark blue object. Well, let's make it C black. I want to make sure you can see this. Okay. And that's in the create event for our solid object. So what that will do is it will make all of the blue objects in here black, right? When we run the game, because it will blend that black color into the, into the normal sprites color and black will just override it and take it over and it will make it black. And it did, but it also made the wall black. Now why is that? Well, it's because the wall inherits the create event from the solid because it's its parent. So everything that the parent has in code will be inherited through the child event. Well, <clears throat> that's great and all, but uh, what if we don't want it to inherit that? 
Well, we can override it by adding our own create event. So if we add a create event into here, we can say, oh, well, instead of making this object black, we want to actually alter its image alpha. So we're just going to do change, well, let's see, set the alpha. Okay, image alpha equals 0.5, which will make that 50% transparent. Okay, and it will also override the the create event for the parent object. So this object will no longer um, inherit the create event. It will inherit everything else now, just not the create event. So if we come in here and run the game again, you'll notice that all of our solid objects will be black like they're supposed to, and our wall is partially transparent. You can kind of see the gray background behind it, and it's no longer black. Well, you might think, well, what if I want both? What if I want to have it have its create event with something in here, and I want it to inherit the create event from the solid object, the this code right here from its parent? Because that happens quite a bit, actually. You want to inherit something, but you want to change it maybe just a little bit and make it just a little different for that object. Well, what you can do is you can use something called events inherited. So you come into here and before, well, uh, where you put this will depend on where you want this code to be run, but generally it will be before because you want it to inherit first and then you'll have your overriding code afterwards. You'll do events inher event inherited and then just two, two, uh, um, two parentheses right there. So this will inherit the create event from its parent object, which is the object solid, and then it will also do its own create event for the image alpha. So we should get a black wall that's also partially transparent. And when we come into the game, uh, when once it finishes compiling, you'll be able to see that that we get a. Uh, uh, we get this object right here inherited the blackness from the object solid, but it also did its uh, partially transparent code right there. And then all the while our player object can still collide with all of these like it's supposed to. So that is the benefit of parents. Hopefully this video helped you. Um, I know someone specifically asked me to make a video on parenting and it is so important. You've got to learn this if you want to build a game that is very big. You've got to understand this concept. And what you'll do is you'll think, hmm, what types of objects am I going to have in my game? And then you're going to write down what things are going to be the same in those objects. And you're going to create parent objects for everything that's going to be the same. And then all of the little differences you're going to write into the children objects. And those you'll just have little uh, basically altering codes in all the children objects. And that's the best way to set up your structure. Um, it helps you to understand your code better and if you ever need to change anything you only have to change it in one spot so thank you so much for watching uh, I'm gonna put my Kickstarter link here again if you wanted to check that out but wanted to watch my video first uh, go check out my Kickstarter all your support helps me it's been really exciting I'm gonna add some new stretch goals if you have ideas for stretch goals throw them in the comments I'm open for ideas I'm not gonna do everything because I I do want to make sure I keep the scope of the project um, manageable so that I can finish it on time and ship it out to you guys. Um, I'm actually going to be ordering a kind of like a demo hard copy here from the company um, that's going to be doing the printing and I'm going to be showing that. I'm pretty excited about that. So thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys later.